This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. Today is the synaxis of the Holy Archangels. That simply means it's the day that we remember the great archangels of uh, the Lord. And I know in our modern society we have tons of stories about angels and we have tons of stories about, um, um, and I don't, now some of you are old enough to remember this, some of you are not. If you're not old enough to remember it, that's fine. But there was a really famous television show called Touched by an Angel um, about two years ago. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and it was just very, very famous. It was very, very, uh, very powerful and everybody was very, very interested in it. But the challenge became that uh, all of this interest in angels really got people falling into a very, very familiar trap. Many of you may realize that throughout the centuries there have been tons of stories about angels here and there, but I'd like to kind of, I don't want to demystify it, but I, I do want to give you a perspective that the very main reason why we have these stories of angels is because of what the word angelos means. It means messenger. Messenger. Do you know that priests in certain places are called angelos? They're called angels. Nobody would ever apply that to me, but some have been known for that. And the reason why is because that the very foundation of the concept of angels is the concept of bringing a message to you. Now the question isn't whether the message comes to you. The question is, are you awake to hear it. Now this is the most significant reality in our lives, brothers and sisters, because God has throughout the centuries been a regular blabbermouth. He's kept nothing secret. God has kept God has told everything to everybody about everything. He's not tried to keep anything secret. He's not tried to keep anything hidden from you. In fact, in the Garden of Eden, our mother and father were lied to by a fallen messenger that lied to them and told them that God was trying to keep something from them. That God didn't want them to be like him. That was a lie. God has always intended to have every spiritual tool available to you and me to make us like him because the only way you're going to ever enjoy eternity is to be like God. Because if you are completely unlike God in every way, shape, fashion, and form, Precious friends, you will not like heaven. The only difference is going to be, dear ones, is that he's uncreated and we're created. We will never cross that barrier. We will never cross that plane. He will always be beyond us, but he's always bringing us to himself. The journey of eternity, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of the divine liturgy, the purpose of the prayers and the rhythm of life of the Orthodox faith is to get you used to eternity, to get you used to being like God. And so God has sent messengers to bring you the message on how to do that. Because, brothers and sisters, you can get the best education in the world. You can have a fine uh, job, and a fine career. You can make a lot of money. You can make a little money. You can be very rich or you can be very poor. You can have a fine house or you can live in a, very, in a very broken down house. You can drive a fine car and you can give your life energies to tons of things that will take you in different places in your life. You can do all of those things. But if at the very foundation of your life isn't a desire to enjoy eternity and be like God, heaven is going to be hell to you and death will catch you by surprise. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. Any other use, any other reason for all of this religious work that we do is nothing more than, than window dressing. This is the purpose of orthodoxy. To help you learn how to be like God in Jesus Christ and to enjoy eternity forever. Any other purpose, folks, and you're just simply wasting your time. Now that brings me to one of the most powerful messages. In fact, you very rarely see me bring out anything to read from, but I didn't want to miss this. <clears throat> and the reason why I didn't want to miss it is because our, one of our bishops, actually the, 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 uh, the hierarch over the Carpathian Russian Archdiocese in the United States, 
uh, Bishop Gregorios, who was a, who is a dear friend of mine. He used to be the idiokitics here in uh, the metropolis of Atlanta. And Bishop Gregorios is now the head of the Carpatho-Russian Archdiocese. And uh, he gave a talk at the, uh, at the clergy conference that I wanted to bring out. Just I can't, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing because he talked for an hour. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to talk for about an hour and a half so that we get it. No, I'm just teasing you. But I wanted you to hear what he said because of our emphasis on angels today is our emphasis of understanding angels and the work that even the priesthood does in bringing you a message. You understand that the purpose of someone bringing you a message is for you to hear it, right? If someone sends you a letter, or nowadays, I know that's quaint, if someone sends you an email and you ignore it, if someone calls you and leaves a message for you and you ignore it, they're going to be upset with you, aren't they? In fact, I had a priest friend of mine there in San Diego put, him, put his arm around me. He said, Father, I called you two weeks ago. You haven't called me back. I was embarrassed. I had forgotten to call him back. And so that, well, that's the purpose of a message. And brothers and sisters, if your spiritual life isn't set you to where you can hear the message of the gospel, the word of God, the message of our holy orthodox faith, if you're, if you're deaf to that message, then understand there are some messages that are more important than others. The message that you hear in the, in the house of God is the most important message you're ever going to get. No email from your boss. No directive from President Obama. Not even a phone call from your mother is more important than the message you're hearing in the house of God today. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. This is the message. If you miss this, folks... Miss every other message in your life. Don't miss this one. So Bishop Gregory was talking about uh, talking to us priests, and his message to us priests was, "Do your job. Do your job." And he began to open that up by quoting a paper from a, a dear friend of mine by the name of Father Aris Matrakis. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not. He used to be the parish priest in Columbia, South Carolina. He is now the dean of the cathedral in San Francisco. And years ago, around 2006, Father Aris wrote an article called Brother, Can You Spare a Paradigm? Now that's cute, but it has nothing to do with anything he wrote, but I thought it was cute. And in that article, he talked about the paradigms that are being broken by today's realities. Brothers and sisters, you've heard me say this before. You know the seven last words of a dying church, don't you? Or a dying organization. You know the seven last words are, we've never done it that way before. That's the seven last words of a dying church. The seven last words of a dying organization. We've never done it that way before. If we don't pay attention to the reality of our day, we will find ourselves to becoming completely irrelevant to everyone around us. And that's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to bring a message to this generation. It's a timeless message. It's a message, message that's old, but it's still a message that needs to be heard. And as, and as Bishop Gregory was talking to us, he told us about the different paradigms of the priesthood that must go away. These are ideas about what a priest is that are completely wrong. And the first idea of the priesthood is the priest as witch doctor. Some people treat the priest that way. The priest as witch doctor. Father, can you give me the special blessed stuff so that I can uh, have the magic? Now, that's an attitude that's quite understandable. In fact, it's actually very normal in the human race. We humans much prefer magic over faith. We humans much prefer the magic of saying the right incantation. So that's why some people get upset. Well, Father, you didn't do that exactly right. Why, or why are you worried about that? Well, because if you don't do it exactly right, then, you know, the... The, 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 the spell isn't cast properly. Well, they would never say that. But in, in the spirit of the things, that's what they think. And the idea of pr the priest as witch doctor has to go away because it isn't true. It's based on a faulty message. 
The priest is not the, the tribal witch doctor. The priest is the priest of the Lord Jesus Christ. We Orthodox say over and over again, there's only really one priest that's ever existed, and that's Jesus Christ. All other priests are simply stepping in his place and participating in his one priesthood. And so I want to challenge you this morning to define the priest not as a witch doctor, not as someone casting the right spell by saying the right incantation, but the man who is standing in the place and serving in the ministry of Jesus Christ. It is a sickness among us if we reduce the priest to a witch doctor. The next idea that must go away is the priest is cruise director. I've met these priests. Anybody ever watched Love Boat before? The priest is cruise director. The place is so busy. There's so many things going on. There's so much activity going on around. His main job is just to make sure that all of that, the, that the calendar is filled with all kinds of activities and stuff and things to do. The priest as cruise director is the guy who is absolutely constantly busy doing little things and leaving the most important things undone. And the most important thing is, brothers and sisters, the job of the priest is to stand and pray for you and speak to you. Did you hear that? The priest as cruise director must go away. Now, he's very popular many times because there's all kinds of fervor and activity around his place. And yet, the one thing he must do, pray for you and speak to you, must also be done. The next one is the priest as CEO. I've met those as well. This is the priest who loves meetings. I am not a CEO. I am convinced that more, more uh, souls and dreams have been crushed by an overactivity of meetings than ever before. Let's have a meeting. We'll have a meeting about the meeting so that we can meet later on to talk about the meeting about the meeting. It's entirely about something else other than being angelos, other than being a messenger. The priest as CEO is an idea about the priesthood that must go away because it is no longer viable in our generation. Do you understand me? That's the message I hope you're hearing today. Next, the priest as museum curator. The priest as museum curator is the man who sees himself as having, the, as having his main job as preserving old words. That's his only job. Preserve old words and do that at all costs. Preserve old ways and do that at all costs. He must do that. And unfortunately, many times, especially in our own society, the Orthodox Church is looked at as nothing but a museum of how Christianity used to be. But brothers and sisters, an idea that Orthodoxy is not as dynamic and as alive and as effectual and as important in this moment as it was in 1500 or in 400 or in A.D. 33 means that we have forgotten the message from the angelos, from the messenger. The message is the Orthodox faith is just as real today as it has ever been because the Orthodox faith is not old. The Orthodox faith is timeless. It crosses time and geography and language and culture. And it comes to you and me today with an invitation. Do you wish to enjoy eternity? Do you wish to be like God so much that you will have a family resemblance when you come to stand before the awesome judgment seat of Christ? Do you? If you want that, this is the place. Finally, the priest as chaplain. Now, this one is tough for me because I like this one. And many of us like him as well. The, one another, the last obsolete paradigm of the priest to lead ministry is the priest as chaplain. And it's the most appealing. Here the parish priest dutifully tends his flock by visiting the sick, celebrating the services, and maintaining the parish programs. What could be wrong with this, Father Aris writes? Nothing if we still lived in a Christian society. Back in the fictitious old country, back in the Horyo, when the people were out in the fields and the, and the parish bell would ring, 
And the people would drop their tools in the, in, in the field and go to Vespers on every Saturday night. I don't know if you realize this or not. You know, we have Vespers every Saturday night here. Every Saturday night we have Vespers. Because that's the first service of our Sunday celebration. And so the challenge becomes, my precious friends, the challenge becomes to understand the day and age that we live in. And all of this work as the priestess chaplain is very good. It's not bad. And he needs to do all of those things. But he must become something else in this generation. And that's the priest as the missionary. And the purpose I'm convinced of Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene, and many other priests. By the way, I talked to Father Evan Armitas. Uh, he has a parish in Colorado. And Father Evan put me to shame. <clears throat> he said, you know, Father, we're, we're, we're really uh, struggling because we have no room. He said, we're now 80% convert, and we were reaching out to our people and doing all these things. And I said, well, well, what are you doing, Father Evan? He said, I'm just trying to preach better. I'm just trying to preach better. Trying to just, in, just assume. In fact, I told them. I told them something that I passed along to our leaders here. What would your life be like as an Orthodox Christian if you assumed, watch this, what would your life be like on a daily basis if you assumed every person you met wanted to be Orthodox and you could introduce them to it? What would your life be like? Turns out, precious friends, it's probably true. Every human being desires more than they desire air to have a relationship with God. They may not realize it. <clears throat> they may not know it. They may not be able to articulate it. But that gaping hole in the human heart can be filled with only one relationship, and that's the relationship with Jesus Christ. This morning, the parish priesthood must become missionary. We must re-evangelize our precious ones who have grown up in this faith and have forgotten or taken it for granted. And we must introduce this faith to every man, woman, boy, and girl because, precious friends, if orthodoxy does not belong to everyone, if it just belongs to a certain group, if it just belongs to a certain language, if it just belongs to a certain culture or a certain nation, then it is not the Christian faith. It's something else. If orthodoxy doesn't belong to everybody soon, it will belong to no one. That's the reality of our demographics of today. And so, on this Sunday of the synaxis of the Holy Archangels, the messenger speaks clearly to his parish and says, it's time for us to be orthodox on purpose. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.